Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at building the card class and creating a couple instances of cards with validation. In this video, what we're going to talk about is building a deck of cards. So a deck of cards would have a total of 52 cards. I'm not going to be adding jokers uh, into uh, this video, but the intent here is to create a deck of cards. that's going to look something like this, but it would also do it for hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. So same technique. Before we start programming, we need to start talking about design. So what's the name of our class? Well, it's a deck of cards. That's exactly what you would call it if you had a physical deck of cards in your hands. So that's what we should call it inside the computer. Now, what do we want to store? Well, we need to store the deck itself, right? So um, some kind of collection that will hold all of the card objects in one spot, just like a box would hold, uh, you know, 52 playing cards. And then cards also have an image on their backside. Uh, so we need something to store the image of the card. And <clears throat> for methods, we have our typical get and set methods, but we also have to have the ability to deck. If you have a deck of cards, you should be able to deal the top card off the deck. And you should be able to shuffle the deck. There's many other methods we might be able to think about, like cutting the deck or, um, you know, getting a random card, things like that. But for now, we're just going to deal the top card and shuffle it. So let's go into IntelliJ and look at how to build this. So what I'm going to do is in the same directory. Okay, so I'm in the source directory and right click, say new Java class. We go to our design. The design says the class name should be deck of cards. So we're going to say deck of cards. And <clears throat> here we have our instance variables. So we need to define those as well. So I'm going to say private. And I need to decide, well, what type of collection will I use to hold all these cards? I personally like the array list. I think it's a, it's a powerful method. And the type of object it will hold are cards. And I'll call it the deck. And then we'll have private image. Okay, and much like with card, I'm actually just going to comment that out for now. And we will add it when we go to do our GUI. So same as before, the the steps to creating a class are going to be you know, step one, define the class, which we've done. Step two is define the instance variables, which we have done. Step three would be create constructor. Okay, so this will define the object in the system. And then the last thing is to create uh, set methods. And actually the very last thing <laughs> is going to be to create a custom method. So this is the steps that we're going to do for every single class that we create. So first steps first, we've defined the class. That's, that's done here on line five. Define the instance variables, that's done on lines six and seven. So our next step is create the constructor. So I'm gonna right click, generate constructor, and I'll say, okay. Now I could have this as a constructor, but it requires me to have an array list of card objects to pass in. So this So perhaps I have a, some kind of a game that has a, uh, a specialized deck. Like for example, I believe Euchre has a specialized uh, set of, of cards. They don't use all the cards. So in this case, maybe I would want my constructor to accept some type of collection of cards that is a subset or smaller than a full deck of cards. Or we can have, uh, Okay, 
So <clears throat> in this case, I would say public, there's no return type. Constructors do not have return types and they must have the exact same name as the class, right? So this class is called deck of cards. So I'm going to say public deck of cards, no arguments get passed in. And then what I need to do is I need to have a list of all the suits that I want to create and all the face names that I want to create. So So I'll say the suits equals, and in the last video, we showed that in the card class, if we wanted the, uh, the suits, we had this static method that would get us all the valid suits. So if I go back to my deck of cards, <clears throat> I type card, right? So the card class and I hit dot. These are all the methods available to, available to me without a specific card object. And you can see we can access that method to get the valid suits. That's because this is a static method, static method. Okay, so there's just a little note for you if you're going through my uh, my GitHub. So we've got suits and we've got, we'll have a collection for face names. So I'm gonna say card, dot, get about face names. So now I have a collection of suits and I have a collection of face names. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna loop over top of these to create my card object. So I'm gonna say for, So if hopefully you're familiar with this style of for loop, what this does is if you have a collection, so this is my collection here, right? It's my list of strings for valid suit names. In each position of that collection, each object is a string. And this is a variable name that I'm going to give it, suit. Similarly, this is a collection of face names. In each position of that is a string. And I'm going to use the variable face name, singular, to uh, depict uh, each, each object in there. So now I can, <clears throat> I can basically create card objects, but I haven't initialized my deck yet, right? I have a deck up here. So I'm going to say deck equals new array list. And that gives me an empty array list. And if I scroll up, it's an empty array list that holds card objects. So inside of my constructor here, I now have valid suit, valid face name. So I can say deck add, and here I need to pass in, see how it's looking for a card. So I need to add in a card object. So I'm gonna say new card. And when I go to call the constructor, look at that. It says I need my face name and a suit. Well, that happens to be the exact variable names that I've, I've chosen. So it becomes very easy for me. So now inside of my loop, I go over all the face names for one of the suits, and then it'll go back up here, pick the next suit and go over all the face names, you know, create new cards each time. So let's go back to main and look at this in action. We can get rid of our old items. So in here, if we say deck of cards, deck equals new deck of cards, this should create a default deck of cards. And here, I'm just going to print out deck. Now, if I run this, what it gives me is deck of cards at 1540, right? So this is, again, that generic, uh, object class level of uh, looking at our objects, but we can <clears throat> we can actually look at these in a different way. If I click here in the gutter, you can see the little red uh, circle comes up. 
That means if I use my debugger, it will run up to this point in time. So actually, let's go here and we'll say debug. So the program runs <clears throat> right up to here. And now I actually have the option to step over the code, which would just do this as one step, or I can step into the code. If I step into the code, I actually get to see what happens for every step in the process. So let's do that. <clears throat> so you can see it jumped to our, our constructor, our zero argument constructor. And right now, uh, we don't have any variables. So I can go into this method and it's showing me that it'll return arrays as list, right? And it's going to return a list. So I'm going to step over that now. And now you can see this variable suits is visible down in our variable section. And if I expand it, I can see in position zero is the string hearts. Position one is the string diamonds. Two is spades, three is clubs. So I actually can see that I have an array list of size four with all my valid suit names. I could do the same thing uh, with uh, get valid face names. So I'm just going to step over it. So now with face names, again, I can see I have a collection and here's all the valid face names, two, three, four, five, six. And if I scroll down, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Okay, let's keep stepping through this. So these where it says size equals zero size equals four that's that's just this is the uh the debugger sort of um putting that on top of our code it's not really in the code so we step over that we can see at first suit is hearts and if i step over this it's going to be the two of hearts that we create and if we now step into right because we're going to be deck add It'll evaluate building this new card. So if I step into that, you can see we go to the card constructor and we've passed in face name and suit, which is two of hearts. And if we step down, we see set face name. We step into that, it'll take us to the set face name method. And here we now have a list of valid face names and it will check if valid face names which has two contains two and if it does it's going to set our instance variable so sure enough this is what it had before and now when i look at the face name for my card <clears throat> depicted by this you can see it's the two of and we haven't set the suit yet so in here, the face name is now two. <clears throat> so I'm gonna step over set suit because it does the same thing. And then what happens is we're going to step back through it. Now it's face name is three um, and the uh, suit is still hearts. Scroll over, we can see the suit is still hearts and it'll keep doing this over and over and over again for all these different cards. And if I look at the deck, as I create these, you can see the deck is getting bigger and bigger. Size equals four at this point. So we've got two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, and five hearts. And it'll keep doing this until we get to 52. I don't think you want to watch me click through 52 cards. So I'm just going to hit the play button now and it will run its course. And if we go back to our console, we can see it created the deck of cards object. So there you go. We are now able to create a deck of cards. We can't visually represent them um, in a GUI just yet, but that'll be the next video.